everybody. We're gonna do a slightly different video today, flashing back to the heavyweight division in the 90s and talking about weaponized testing. If you like the kind of work that I do here, do consider supporting my demonetized channel on Patreon or Cash App. Thank you very much. Moving right along, article entitled, quote, Boxer Tommy Morrison never had HIV, according to experts, unquote. Let's read, huh? Tommy Morrison made a name for himself in the ring, defeating the likes of George Foreman and Razor Ruddock. He gained notoriety outside of the ring in 1989 when he starred as Tommy the Machine Gun in Rocky V. In 1996, Morrison made headlines around the world as the first boxer with HIV and was banned from the sport. Before his death in 2013, Morrison and his wife, Trisha, vehemently denied he ever had HIV. Since that time, she has fought to clear his name. After years of legal battles, it appears it just might be happening. This article is from 19... No, it's from 2020. Blah, blah, blah. So, Tommy Morrison was related to John Wayne. Looks like he had his own uh, budding Hollywood career. He was in... He was... He was pretty popular, especially with perhaps uh, young, white, cisgender, <laughs> straight American males who didn't really have, if that's, you know, something of interest to, or was something of interest to a lot of them, they didn't really have a white boxer to cheer for, right? In 1996... He announced that he was diagnosed with HIV. In 1995, Morrison captured the IBC heavyweight title defending Razor Ruddock. Then he lost to Lennox Lewis. And right after that, in 96, the Nevada State Athletic Commission announced that he had tested positive for HIV. He was suspended from the sport, and the ban was, in effect, upheld by every other sanctioning body. And because the diagnosis, suspension, and loss of his livelihood sent Morrison tumbling faster than, Ray, than a Ray Mercer uppercut, his life spiraled out of control with alcohol and drugs. He was arrested multiple times for DUIs. He eventually went to jail for a couple of years for assaulting a college student. Despite an initial admission that his HIV diagnosis was a result of his lifestyle choices, Morrison and his wife Trisha denied he ever tested positive. Hmm. In 2006, a decade after his diagnosis, the Nevada Athletic Commission mysteriously <clears throat> lifted Morrison's ban from boxing without any explanation. In July 2007, the New York Times reported that Tommy Morrison took two HIV tests in 2007 and a third specifically for the Times. HIV experts reviewed the three tests and concluded that the 1996 test had been a false positive. Are we dealing with a similar situation today? If you look into who had been involved in promoting HIV back in those days, you'll see some familiar names. Let me just put it to you this way. If you look at who has been taking cancer drugs and repurposing those old stockpiles of cancer drugs to allegedly treat AIDS, and then who took those AIDS drugs and repurposed them to allegedly cure the current plague, well, you'll see a very, very familiar name of a certain, perhaps... Italian American The mixed result reading from the article in the January 5th test makes it likely that the antibody test result is a false positive according to Dr. Daniel Kurtz 
Kurtzkes, a Harvard professor who directs AIDS research, blah, blah, blah. It's hard to know for sure, says the good doctor, what's going on, but I suspect he was never HIV infected. So then Tommy Morrison's wife fought to clear his name uh, after he died in 2013 from multi-organ failure following a serious infection. Okay, so not HIV. Trisha has continued to fight defending her husband's name, and she's made progress in recent years. In the last month, Trisha, who told World Boxing News she was ru she was granted a hearing allowing her to present evidence before the court, she indicated there were multiple parties working in concert with one another back in 1996. Among the parties and her claims against them, the defendant's Quest Diagnostic issued lab reports that are not a diagnosis of any disease, not even HIV, and used testing that does not detect the HIV virus. That's what she alleged. Let me explain something to you. Um, well, maybe later. The Nevada Athletic Commission, after they indefinitely suspended Morrison, secretly lifted the suspension in 2006, right? Just like that. Then denied ever suspending Tommy in 2016 court records. Now they deny in 2020 that a diagnosis of HIV was ever made. What? Dr. Mar Margaret Goodman, who is head of Voluntary Anti-Doping Association in Las Vegas, told the media in 2007 that John Hyatt was a renowned patho pathologist and a physician and reviewed more since 1996 result. Turns out he never did that and was not a physician or pathologist, says Tommy's wife. What happens in the case of Tommy Morrison is unclear at this point. Based on evidence and the unannounced reversal of Morrison's suspension by the Nevada Athletic Commission years later, plus medical experts now indicating he had a false positive test, there are signs something went wrong years ago in the initial diagnosis. So, according to a different article I read on this, and this makes sense because... This is well known, uh, according to the people who followed the whole HIV um, alleged epidemic. They had used an antibody test to diagnose him as HIV positive, right? Now, what's an antibody test? An antibody test looks for antibodies to the virus, right? Or your body's defense um, allegedly, <laughs> supposedly, theoretically, hypo-theoretically, um, to a pathogen, right? So, theoretically, you get infected with a virus, your body builds a defense, builds up a defense to it by producing antibodies, which neutralize, uh, destroy, uh, clean your body of the virus, right? So, if they found antibodies to the virus in his body. Theoretically, according to what the current germ theory, which is just a theory, proposes, that would mean, if anything, that he was infected with the virus, but his body fought it off, right? So he never had AIDS. Which, is, which are the symptoms, which is the disease, supposedly, allegedly, it's what they say, caused by the HIV virus. So they diagnosed him with an antibody test, which is what's happening today with the current plague, right? Think about that. Think about what that means. So could it be that just as with Magic Johnson, who 30 years later, after his uh, supposed HIV diagnosis, could it be that Tommy Morrison was used to promote that demic to a certain different demographic that uh, Magic Johnson appealed to, right? And obviously, you know, there's lots of crossover there. Uh, I'm not trying to make this like uber racial, but you know. Could it be that 
the powers that be were trying to, uh, you know, promote fear to the widest possible range of uh, demographics in America and, and otherwise, using these celebrities who had a lot of notoriety and clout back in those days to, you know, you know, get you to buy and use condoms, uh, get you to go get tested, and get you to be afraid of, you know, viruses, <laughs> so on and so forth, right? 30 years later, after his diagnosis, Magic Johnson has been doing nothing but putting on weight and just glowing, beaming, looking healthy as ever, right? What's going on? What's going on there, right? Why is he still alive? Tommy Morrison diagnosed again with an antibody test, which the FDA clearly states is not supposed to be used to diagnose any disease. Mm -hmm. no, that's true. Uh, years later, his name is cleared, hush hush, on the DL, right? And the WBC denies ever having uh, did what they did. Or was it the state that Nevada State Athletic Commission, right? And his wife says that the issued lab reports are not a diagnosis of any disease, not even HIV, right? Because antibody tests, according to the FDA, is not to, according to every single manufacturer who produces an antibody test, go directly to their website and read the fine print. It's not supposed to be used to diagnose any disease. And I just explained to you why, right? And use testing that does not detect the HIV virus, right? Because it looks for the antibodies to this supposed HIV virus. Not, it doesn't look for the virus itself. So they never found any virus in him, but they found what they deemed to be, right? There's test error. There's interpretation error. The, the whole theory is just a theory. Show me. Show me. One scientific study that proves that HIV causes AIDS. And then point to the guy who conducted the study and the Nobel Prize that he received. Hmm? The Nobel Prize in science or medicine or whatever. Find me that guy because if that person exists, they should be super duper famous and rich, right? Find me that study. Good luck. So... In my opinion, mm, this was a fuck-up, okay? At the very least, worst-case scenario, uh, Tommy was used to promote something to the youth. I guess we'll never really know, but it's one example of testing, blood testing, being used to eliminate somebody from the sport, for no apparent reason to destroy a career, uh, for no apparent reason, you know, removing him from competition for whatever reason. And then we also have the curious case of uh, Lennox Lewis, uh. fuck off, and Razor Ruddock. So as this article says, and there are a few others, go read it if you feel like it. Uh, Razor Ruddock had asked uh, Lennox Lewis to take a drug test before their fight, right? Just to pee in the cup and do a steroids test. And Lennox Lewis refused to do that, right? Um... Because he was clean, of course, right? Of course. This is what Razor Roddick had to say. I worked darn hard to get there, and I don't want anybody to come in cheating on their steroid use, said Roddick, who reportedly had refused to take Britain's mandatory AIDS test, AIDS blood test, until Lewis submitted a urine sample. Right? Why, why wouldn't he take the AIDS test? Hmm. Was he afraid of something? So, there was another article about this um, that delves a little bit more into the details. 
and this is reposted online, archived um, article from 1992. London. Razor Ruddock challenged Lennox Lewis Thursday to take a steroid test before their heavyweight elimination bout Saturday. You're asking for something that has already been done, Lewis replied at a news conference. Shut up and answer the question, snarled Ruddock. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The steroid challenge came as something of a surprise. Let's play the game fairly, Ruddock said. I'm not asking that much. It's not a big deal. I'm not suggesting that Lewis takes steroids, but I don't want to leave anything to chance. Why doesn't he pee in the bottle now? Ruddock Two of his losses to former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, now in prison for blah, blah, blah. It's pretty silly that he's getting himself wound up over nothing, Lewis said. That test has already been done on me. Well, maybe one day we could see those re the results of that test, huh? With the fuss Ruddock's making, I must have an advantage now. We create our own pressure, and he's putting pressure on himself. Lewis is not contractually bound to be clean of steroids for the bout. <laughs> right? However, Ruddock is an overseas fighter, as an overseas fighter, must be tested before the fight. Okay, so back in the day, and I bet you something similar is happening to this day. Just look at um, the Billy Joe Saunders case, right? When he fails a drug test according to a global sanctioning body, WADA, but in UK he's allowed to do those drugs, right? There you go. Uh... But according to this, uh, British fighters didn't have to take drug tests, but visiting fighters did, right? This is weaponized drug testing, right? You're testing one guy and not the other. How crazy is that? How legit are these people's fights fighting at, uh, at home, right? And this is another thing of hometown advantage. Is someone like Alexander Usyk? being heavily drug tested when he fights in the UK versus guys who aren't being tested at all. Is that what's happening today? I mean, it used to happen. Could it be that it's still happening to this day? Uh, reasonable question, don't you think? I've had experience of this, Roddick said. When I fought Mike Tyson twice, he didn't have a steroids test. But we are in a different position now in this fight against Lewis. Jose Sulaiman, WBC president, said steroids are not on his organization's list of prohib prohibited surf uh, substances. So Lewis refused to do a drug test. Why? Because he was clean? Even though his opponent was being tested. Now let's look at Razor Roddick and why he may have wanted a steroids test for his opponent. So he started his boxing career weighing it at Basically, cruiserweight women limit, 183, right? We're just going to assume that he was rehydrating probably up to 200 pounds, right? Because then from one fight to the next in 1983, in just a short five months, basically, he went from 185 to 194. Did he just gain almost 10 pounds of muscle seemingly overnight? Or was he just fully hydrating for that fight? Eh, I don't know. But let's just assume he was when he was weighing it at 183, he was 200 pounds, right? Walking around in a ring, in in shape, 200 pounds. So from 85, let's say, to and you can go to let's say like um, 90. In five years, he gained 40 pounds of muscle <laughs> yeah all natural i'm sure and go look at photos of him right he's shredded he, he's he's not fat or anything like that the guy is shredded so he gains 40 pounds of muscle all natural right uh a few months before the mike tyson fight he's almost 240 and then he comes into the tyson fight something like three months and a week later and he is 10 pounds lighter now did he just get in better shape because he looked like he was in great shape for all those other fights when he was 240 or 
is this because of the drug test he is talking about? Now, he didn't specifically say that he was being drug tested, but he said that Mike Tyson wasn't, right? Maybe he was in the first fight. He expected to be drug tested being a foreign fighter fighting in in U.S., right? Fighting on foreign soil. Maybe that was something that was just expected of these visiting fighters. So he was getting ready for it and maybe went off cycle, basically, right? And got stopped, got beat up. Controversial stoppage, but he got beat up. Basically would have been stopped, in my opinion, anyway, against Mike Tyson, right? And then maybe because he realized he didn't have to, not juice, came into this, the rematch um, three three months later, right? Ten pounds heavier. <laughs> All natural, baby. And it's not like he got fat or anything like that, right? Maybe he re realized there was no drug testing and cleaned up for the first fight before knowing that. And then once he realized there was no drug testing, just got ba back on cycle and did better, right? He came in heavier and did better. And then he is fighting at his 240 weight, more or less, for a couple of fights. And then going into the Phil Jackson fight, he once again drops not quite 10 pounds, 7 or so. And then in the Lennox Lewis fight, he is even a little bit lighter. Did he, knowing that if he beats Phil Jackson, is going to be fighting Lennox Lewis, did he just clean up? Because he knew he would be going over to London or um, wherever the fight was in England and would have to take a drug test because that's what they did to visiting fighters and probably still do to this day. They drug test them and their own fighters don't get drug tested, right? And then right after the Lennox Lewis fight, he's back at 240. And then, you know, getting older and maybe a little lazier, he goes all the way up to 250. But 240 was his basically um, his fighting weight at that time when he was fit and, you know, had a good amount of muscle and not a lot of fat, right? So it looks like maybe, perhaps, he cleaned up for the first Mike Tyson fight and he had to be off, We he confirmed this, off roids for, or at least he couldn't take uh, PEDs close to the fight, right? He had to clean up in advance. So the two fights were... He was probably tested, the first one probably, the second one for sure. He came 10 pounds lighter from his, what seems like, preferable fighting weight, right? So, whether it's, um, you know, HIV testing or whatever testing, and now it's... It seems to be that they're pushing the jab, right? And other tests associated with this new disease. Or whether it's that disease testing or it's a PED testing. Um, it seems like for quite some time now, there has been a lot of shady stuff going around that when it comes to boxing. We can even look at uh, the first Pacquiao Morales fight which I'll probably make a video about, where Pacquiao was blood-drained, basically, asked to do all these drug tests that maybe, probably, Morales didn't have to do, right? Because I'll get into the details of, of that in, in another fight, but, you know. Then they have a rematch, none of that bullshit, and there was a lot more than that going on in that fight, none of that bullshit, and he just runs over Morales, right? Just runs him over like he wouldn't shit. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, um, weaponized blood testing, drug disease testing seems to have been going on for quite some time in boxing. And we've had, you know, many examples of this, most notably with someone like Deontay Wilder or Povetkin and Dillian White, for example. Look at how differently these two guys have been treated. What do you think is happening in the rematch? Why do you think Dillian White is a big favorite going in after he got knocked out? Why do you think that is? What was going on with Povetkin getting pneumonia 
lately? Like, what, what's all that about? And what sort of testing is he have to gonna gonna have to go through now that he's a marked, you know, now that he's a leper? Hmm? What are they putting him through? At any rate, weaponized blood testing is a sad reality of the sport, and these A sides are always looking to gain any kind of advantage they can. It is what it is. And or sometimes it would seem because of their notoriety, um, these fighters are being made an example out of for whatever reason, whether it be to promote this sort of testing as with Povetkin, for example, and, and protect fighters or to promote, you know, diseases, viruses, so on and so forth, the jab, this and that. So... Weaponized drug testing is definitely a way, or weaponized testing period, a way to gain an advantage for a fighter and something you should um, take into consideration, unfortunately, when predicting these fights. And it's also part and parcel of social engineering, uh, getting you to believe certain bogeyman, terrorizing you, in other words, in my humble opinion, right? So be afraid. Be very afraid. And for damn sure, for damn sure, if you're gonna, you know, bang, make sure you don't make any more babies, okay? No more babies, please. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, the world is overpopulated and you're consuming too much oxygen and breathing out too much CO2, so... Put the fucking mask on your face while you're at it. Slave. At any rate, if you like the kind of work that I do here, and I guarantee you, even though there are maybe a couple of channels that will talk about things of this sort, you will not find anything exactly like this anywhere in the boxing community because the overwhelming majority of channels out there are a whole bunch of fucking grifters just looking to make a buck off the suckers, right? Obviously, um, I got nothing against making a buck, but are you putting in row work or are you just grifting? You know what I mean? So up to you but if you like the type of shit that i do here do consider supporting my demonetized channel because of the kind of work that i do here on patreon or cash app right thank you for listening have a good one